had a little bit of history tonight. Second fastest finish in flyweight history, uh, or submission, and then the first triangle choke finish in flyweight history. What does that mean to you on top of winning? Uh, it's interesting, I suppose, but uh, kind of sad, too, if you think about it. The first triangle in flyweight history? Yeah. Well, I did triangle Lewis Smolka in my last fight. He is a flyweight. I'm a flyweight, so I count that. Um, yeah, I mean, cool, making history, I suppose, but uh, I, I try not to, to count up the the nonsense, you know, like that doesn't mean much to me. I'm, I'm out here trying to get wins and uh, provide for, for my wife and my family, and uh, I could care less about the things that, uh, the little little bitty things along the way. That doesn't mean anything to me. And I mean, the way you set it up, obviously, you know, you're kind of chaining submissions together. Is that one of your triangle setups, how it kind of came together? I guess so. Uh, it's worked twice in a row now, guillotine to triangle. Interesting. Um, I don't know, he was hurt. He was hurt. Y'all might not have been able to see it, but uh, as he came in, I think I clipped him behind the ear, and he was face first in the mat. And I think if I would have been able to separate and uh, hammer fist him a couple of times, it would have been a TKO victory, but we'll take it. And uh, I'm always hunting for the finish. And, uh, you know, look at my body of work. I know what people say about this division, but I'm a finisher, always have been. Uh, a lot of first round finishes too. You know, and uh, I'm going to keep on doing my thing. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it was scary there for a while for a lot of us flyweights, you know, and I'm a survivor of the flyweight purge, and I'm happy to be here. And uh, I've said it for a long time, and I truly believe it. I'm one of the best in the world. You put me in there with anybody, and I'm going to scrap. What was uh, your mindset when, you know, you were seeing that all these flyweights were getting cut? And you know, there wasn't really any resolution or any news about it. Uh, what was going on through your mind? I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid that I was going to be uh, a casualty, and fortunately, I, I survived. You know, and I think uh, I kind of kept quiet and kept to myself and didn't rock the boat and make a lot of noise. And you know, it, it uh, kept me afloat. And here we are. And hopefully, they're bringing this division back, and I can be a big part of it. It seems like they are. Um, do you feel that way? Do you feel like the flight division is in the clear now? Yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. Uh, I think they need to sign more guys. I think this division needs an influx of young. Uh, talent. There's guys out there who are uh, very good that are that are on the outside looking in. Uh, Dustin Ortiz, sign Dustin Ortiz back, man. That dude deserves it. And, uh, I, I just want to see this division flourish, and uh, you know, I'd like to reign supreme at the top. I think I'm a perennial guy. Uh, I've been in this sport for a long time. I think this is my 33rd uh, fight, something like that, and uh, I feel good. I feel good. I'm getting comfortable and. Yeah. Me, kind of a big announcement uh, afterwards, pending fatherhood, congratulations. How much of an added motivator was that tonight? It's just in the back of my mind. All I could think about on my walk was my wife. and Been very emotional, you know, uh, fighting tears off all the time. And I'm in an interesting place. Everything I have, I've worked for, you know, and I, I built this life with my two hands. And I tell people all the time, you know, I. I I don't come from much. I never, never excelled at anything. Rode the bench my entire athletic career. I barely graduated at the bottom of my class in, in the state of Louisiana, which some people don't even, I think it's ranked number 48 in education, and uh, graduated at the bottom of my class. Never had many prospects to, to, to do much, and here I am uh, making a life for myself. You also, uh, when we spoke before the uh, fight, you said you know, it's important that the guys who are matched up right now create standout moments. Was that sort of you know, in the back of your mind as well tonight? For sure. I wanted to clip him with this right hand and send him to the canvas, but uh, we'll take it. I'm a finisher. Uh, there's nowhere, there's no, nowhere in the fight that you can put me that I'm not competent. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I always try to fill in the gaps, and I understand my weaknesses, and I'm not afraid of them. Uh, we, we face them, and uh, me and my coaches and my team, we talk about these things, and we know we know what needs to be shored up before we make that walk for the title. And I believe that uh, I believe in my team. I believe in my squad. We're gonna get it done. Last one for me. I mean, we also spoke, and you call him out in the cage, Davison. Would you be willing to go to Sao Paulo uh, in the fall for that fight? No. <laughs> I'm not going to Brazil. Hell no. He's gonna have to come here. Uh, I I refuse to go to Brazil. I, I've just seen too much. You know, Davison Figueiredo got dropped on his head four or five times by Jared Brooks and lost a decision. And if that was in the United States, it could have been, it could have been 30, 25. I don't know. It, it, he definitely didn't win that fight. So no, I'm not going to Brazil. He likely a top 10 fighter after this victory. Well, what's the path to the title? Is that where your mindset's at? Figueiredo. 
Figueredo's the path. Yeah. Or, I, I don't know, uh, I've won four in a row. Uh, Henry's out touring South America, hanging out with Brazilian supermodels. And I'm not mad at him, but uh, if he's not gonna keep the division afloat, then somebody does have to. And Joe Benavidez is the clear cut number one contender. And if they're looking for a guy, I know somebody. I love Joe Benavidez, close friends, but I have to fight all these guys. And uh, it'd be an honor to step in there with a legend like Joseph Benavidez. I've been watching Joe Benavidez since I was 16 years old. I hadn't, I hadn't even stepped foot inside a gym or started competing. I, I still thought I was going to play in the NFL. So uh, <laughs> it would be an honor and uh, a privilege. And I, I believe that it is also a fight that could accrue a little bit of uh, attention and excitement. I don't know what they're thinking. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready to go out there. I can never guarantee victory. I'm not the type of guy, but every single time I step out there, I'm gonna bring it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it in there with me and, and fight till the bitter end. And uh, that's who I am. That's, that's what I do. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations.